Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you know on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Mice T. So yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and free access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. All that for as little as $5, y'all. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up. Let's go. Say, oh yeah, the long road back. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Gavin. Gavin walks in the front door of the bookstore for the first time in at least a month. It's my first time in Barlow since my transformation, and I keep finding novel things to notice about the shop's decor and sense from this vantage. Hopefully I'll have time to take a closer look later since there's more pressing business right now. Oh, hey, Gavin, right? Nice to see you. Hi, Felix. How are you holding up? Felix's haggard face tells me more than any answer he plans on giving. I'm okay. Uh, sorry, if you wanted to see Margaret, she's actually out today. Or, well, she's been out for a bit, actually. She's been out sick for like a week. Damn, she's eye-catching. Sylvia, Sylvia joins Felix at the desk from, from among the aisles. Felix even made me come in today on my day off. I'm gonna be late for my big social event at this rate. Well, I'm sorry, it's just that with Margaret being gone and the hiring process taking longer than I thought and inventory being... Aw, oh, you're fine, I don't have to go... I don't have anyone to go with anyway. Margaret's probably just getting revenge on me for missing all those shifts earlier. <laughs> if only. Have you heard much from her this last week? She's not responding very often, and I'm a little worried about her. That's actually why I'm here today. Margaret wanted me to let you know how she's doing. Oh, is she okay? Yeah, she's fine. A lot better than she was earlier this week. See, Felix, I told you she was fine. You're always worrying too much. Oh, well, I'm glad she's doing better. But, I mean, she's been out for six days. You can't expect me to not be concerned. You don't have to jump on the worst-case scenario. Jeez, Felix. Didn't you ever play hooky from school? No. God, I can't believe I work for you sometimes. Did she say if she's going to make it back to work soon? I mean, not that she should come back before she's recovered, but just, you know, when it's appropriate for her to return, it's, if it's not jeopardizing her health, which should be her number one... When's she coming back, Gavin? Felix flinches at the interruption, but he can't hide his relief at someone asking the direct question. She wanted to let you know herself, or rather, she wanted to ask when you think she should come back. What do you mean? I'll let you know, but first, would you mind talking somewhere private for a moment? It's something she'd like to keep confidential for now. Oh, um, sure, we can talk in the back. I'll hear if anyone comes in the front door. Great, thanks. Heh. <laughs> Gavin follows Felix and Sylvia into the back room. So, it's not serious, right? Not life-threatening or anything, just kind of unusual. What is it? She's still far less nervous than Felix, but Gavin has finally piqued her curiosity. Well, I came here so she could tell you herself. I keep my eye at the, pe at the people in Gavin's vest pocket just long enough to see their quizzical faces. Then I lift both paws to the edge and rouse up their last little bit of courage to reveal myself to people I actually know. Hi, you two! This is what's been keeping me from work. The two of them stand there, dumbfounded, for several seconds. So, uh, I guess you might... Eee! <laughs> oh crap, I knew she would have bailed when I saw Sylvia was... Oh my god, you're so cute! Ah. Have you been like this the whole time? What are you wearing? Is that is that a doll dress? Oh jeez, it has little ruffles and bows and... Eee! <laughs> she clasps her hands in front of her and hops up and down like a child waiting to be let loose on Christmas, on her Christmas gifts. I... How did this happen? Well, the short answer is I found some magic tea and drank too much. Wait, this is actual real magic? I guess so. I can't think of anything else that would that could do this. So, wait, did someone curse the tea? Did, did someone do this to you? No, just kind of stumbled across it. Wait, is this permanent? Hearing that dampen Sylvia's glee. We don't think so. I used to be even smaller, so we think I can get back to normal with enough time and effort. You're telling me you used to be smaller? Well, only a couple centimeters or something. Does that mean you're going to turn back at the rate of two centimeters a week? No, or at least I don't think so. I've only known how to reverse this for about two days, and each day I'm getting better at it. The goal right now is to get her normal in one or two months. We figured I couldn't keep hiding that long, so I'm going to go public, and ensure nothing bad can happen to me without the, ro without the world knowing. In the meantime, I'm telling a few close friends and family so they don't worry about me. We're going to see my parents after this. Felix looks even more shocked than he was before. Oh gosh, thanks for trusting us then. Second y'all, water time. Hmm. That's some good stuff. 
You're welcome. I mean, there's also the matter of me missing out on another two months of work, so I couldn't really ghost you without causing a problem. Hope my absence won't be too tough a blow. I understand if you have to let me go. Oh goodness, no, of course not. And who says you need to stay out that long? Everyone looks at Sylvia with the same confusion. What do you mean? You could still come to work at Barlow's. Sh she could? Of course, just to have her stand on the desk behind the register. Oh, we could even make a little stand of books and a ladder for her to use. S Sylvie, I'm not going to make her work when she's like this. You don't have to make her, I just think she might appreciate the offer. Sylvie, I know you mean well, but my responsibilities at the store are a lot more than just standing behind the register. And I'll help. Felix, just schedule us together as a pair. She doesn't work here unless I'm, I'm, she doesn't work here unless I'm with her. Sylvia working more hours was the absolute last thing I wanted expected to come out of this reveal. But, I mean, would she want to be here where she could be, be, I don't know, anywhere else? She said she wanted to be in public. She'd attract tons of attention as the mouse lady who works at a bookstore. People would eat that up. We'd have everyone coming to see her. I think the store isn't the most important consideration right now. Then at least ask her if she wants to do it. <laughs> Both turned to me, and my fur bristles. Oh, well, my savings would take a big hit if I couldn't work until I turned back, so the hours would be nice. Are you sure you'd be willing to accompany me the whole time? Cross my heart and hope to die. She takes the effort to act out the whole gesture. I look up to Gavin. I mean, you were talking about wanting to get out of the get out of the apartment. I guess I could at least try it one time. Once I make the announcement, that is. However much time you need. Sylvia claps her hands and squeals again. Ooh, this is going to be so much fun! Day 14. Local celebrity. Tea funds. Come on. This is Miley... This is Miley Mastowitz for Good Morning New Greenshire, and I'm here at Downtown Tea Shop Tea Friends with Brixton, with Brixton resident and local success story Margaret DeCampos. Miss DeCampos started an international frenzy last week when she posted a video of herself claiming to have been turned into a mouse by a mysterious tea she found at this very shop. What started out as an attempt to figure out how an amateur could produce such convincing special effects soon turned into a worldwide fascination with the story turned out to be genuine. Since then, she's been splitting her time between the local bookshop where she works and a tea shop, both of which have attracted huge crowds wanting to meet the, the diminutive Miss DeCampos. Margaret, thank you for joining us today. The pleasure's all mine. I lean over from the stool I stand on to speak into the clip-on microphone they set up on a tiny stand for me. So, the first thing I'd like to ask is whether you thought you'd be such a huge sensation when you released that first video. I was kind of banking on it, to be honest. The idea was the video would make enough people aware of me so that I could figure out how this thing, how this thing happened without hiding. We had a pretty good idea it would catch people's attention after, uh, well, let's call it a soft launch of my reveal at the local furry convention. It was actually that community who figured out the case of your transformation, wasn't it? Yep, it only took them about two days. Word spread around really far and found its way to someone who works for the tea producer that made the box I found. It turned out to be a prototype tea that we're planning on releasing in the future. They had recovered the lost technique for making the transformative tea and were trying to be careful to not let the secret out. Apparently the box got misplaced and we kind of ruined their plans. Have you been in contact with them? Yeah, the producer sent this big formal apology and wanted to compensate me for all the trouble. Instead, I just asked for some more tea and a chance for Tea Friends to be an official distributor when the tea starts selling next year. So, you've been happy with the results? Alright, y'all, water time. Well, I wasn't at first. I had no idea what was going on or if the transformation was permanent. But since then, I've learned how to reverse the process, and I am slowly getting back to my usual size. In the meantime, people are enjoying seeing, seeing me at Tea Friends and at Barlow's Books. I understand the crowds have been very impressive. Yeah, both stores have been doing great. Each, had a, each has had to hire new staff. It's a little crowded, but thankfully everyone's cognizant about making sure I've got enough space. People are kind of protective of me when I'm this size. And you've been able to keep working like this. Well, maybe not quite as effectively as before, but I'm still giving it a shot. <laughs> that's what it looks like. Honestly, that's probably what people are coming to see. Me struggling with all these newly big implements, but still managing to get things done. Do you ever just think of taking things easy and coming in, of coming into work? Instead of coming into work? Maybe, but I was so cooped up that first week that I'm excited to get out and interact with people. Everyone being so nice and supportive has really encouraged me, too. It's not just customers in the store, either. You've gained a huge following on social media by posting clips of you working at the store and doing things around the home. Oh, yeah, that's where we keep people out updated about which store I'll be at that day. But you're right, the most popular videos are just me doing everyday stuff. 
It feels kind of silly to get so many views and likes from simple things like showing my breakfast or what it takes for me to read a book, but that's what people find interesting. There's only going to be so much time for people to see that stuff after all. That's right, you're only going to be like this for a limited time. Well, I'm only going to be mouse-sized for a little while longer, but I'll still be small and mousy for a while. The people who make the tea confirm my method for turning back should work, but it will be gradual, so anyone who wants to come see me, should see me like this should visit soon. Good advice, to be sure. I bought a box of Darjeeling here that was to, that was to die for. From Tea Friends in downtown, I'm Miley Mastowitz for Good Morning New Greenshire. Goodbye. She lowers her microphone and the cameraman does the same with his camera. Good job, Margaret. That's B that B-roll you gave us is going to get a lot of hits on our website. We might even break it out into a couple Twitter posts to spread out over a couple days. It's called X now. Or Zitter. It's called Zitter. Maybe Zwitter? <laughs> it's called Zwitter. Stupid! Glad I could help. Good job dropping the store names all those times, and I gotta say, you're not bad at milking this cute little mouse lady angle. Lugging the sugar cube around to drop in the teacup? That's knowing your audience. Yeah, I almost wish the old doll dress still fit for this shoot. I think I sold it just fine like this, though. Definitely. Good luck with the store. Thanks. Could she... Day 30? Oh, wow, we're going on quite ahead. Notes of sweetness. I wonder... Could she be a fully-sized mouse woman? Oh, oh, wow. She's getting bigger. Gavin holds the door of his apartment open, and I walk through the. I walk through with my chest held high like a proud kindergartner who just completed her first day of school on her all, all on her own. She's got some new stuff up. Catch and release. One way, one way or another, you're hooked. <laughs> what? That's so silly. Hey, that's cool. I like. What's that? I wonder what that's from. That's from some kind of actual property or something. I like the way it looks. I'm just about the right size to look like one, too. See? I got through the whole day with all walking around by myself. Gavin, gentleman that he is, doesn't point out that he chaperoned me around the entire time I was out in public. You were right! I hop up on the desk. I might be one of the it might be one of the last days I'll be able to. Of course I was right. What am I not? <laughs> one of these days, I'll remember. He goes off to the kitchen to prepare some tea with his heated boiler tap. I was a little worried there with, there with the gap onto the train car. Oh, I'm always super careful around those. Ever since I got my foot caught between the train and the platform that one time. Second L, water time. It's nice to see you're actually doing well. Wait, have I heard that story yet? Nope, I only trust boyfriends I've dated a while with that one. Was it serious or anything? Nope, just mortifying. I wasn't looking where I was going, and my foot got wedged right in, right in there. They had to stop the train and bring a station attendant out there to yank me free. A few people even pushed on the side of the train to make the gap wider. He returns with a tea bag already steeping in his mug. Uh, sounds intense. I made the whole train late, and everyone was glaring at me the whole time. I sweated through basically my whole shirt. I got off the very next station instead of enduring the whole ride home. I had to wait for the next train. They said taught you to mind the gap. Irrevocably. Work went well, too? Yep, all I need is a stepladder to work the register now. I think we can use a similar getup for days that I'm free that I'm at Tea Friends. I even worked on the floor restocking shelves. The bottom ones, anyway. Sylvia's still being helpful? Oh, yeah, though honestly, I might be able to work without her there. Gotta stop asking for you two to work as a duo? Oh, heck no, she's turned into a model employee through all this. I'm not going to turn down the chance to have her help. Working at the store in my mouse in ma in mouse mode has been like teaching Sylvia responsibility by giving her a pet. Glad to use the P word, not me. He gives a subtle cheers with his mug and brings the tea to his lips. He then proceeds to drink the whole thing. Wait, is he? My sense of smell is growing less acute as I grow larger, but I take a big whiff to try and, and uh, sense what he's drinking. The scent of grass, cotton, and flowers is unmistakable. Wait a second. Gavin, are you drinking kimono tea? He tips the bottom of his mug toward the ceiling to get those last few drops. The smirk that's revealed when he lowers the mug tells me all I need to know. What tipped you off? I can still smell pretty well, you know. Darn, I thought I was going to surprise you this time. You're not that sneaky. Are you thinking of doing some play tonight? If you were up for it, maybe. Hmm, what should I do with my pretty little falcon boyfriend then? Oh, I bet I'm big enough to blindfold you now. Heh, <laughs> might be fun. Or maybe I'd tie you up more thoroughly. Do you have any rope? Not that kind of rope, but we could improvise something. Probably just as well. I don't know enough to actually tie you up for really for real. It'd be mostly for show. It's around this time that Gavin usually starts sprouting feathers. The transformation has taken less has taken less time and less tea each time he drinks some, though it's definitely plateaued at this point. 
All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, bring that notification bell, and uh, look at our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye.